students last time we have studied about the calculation of formulas if uh, we are given the number of atoms present either at the corner face as is or body center now we know that solid uh, is that state of matter in which the particles are closely packed to each other the close packing of all the particles is the next topic which we are going to study and this can be done better with the help of videos substances form solids they tend to pack together to form ordered arrays of atoms ions or molecules let's see how this order arises and what different kinds of arrangements are possible many a times oranges or apples stacked nicely on a vendor's cart catch your attention it is a practical application of close packing a honeycomb is an excellent example of close packing found in nature a close packing is thus defined as a way of arranging equidimensional objects in space such that the available space is filled very efficiently solids are three dimensional objects and we will develop their structure in three steps to understand to understand how the constituent particles are packed let us assume that these particles are hard spheres of identical size First, let's look at close packing in one dimension. You can see that there is only one way of arranging the spheres in a one-dimensional close packed structure. That is, by arranging them in a row touching each other. In this arrangement, each sphere touches two neighboring spheres. In general, the number of nearest neighbors of a particle is defined as its coordination number therefore the coordination number of a particle or sphere in one dimensional close packing is 2 let's now look at close packing in two dimensions when a number of rows are stacked up a two dimensional crystal plane is generated obviously There are two ways of stacking the rows. One way is for the rows to lie one above the other with one sphere exactly above another. You can see that the spheres are aligned horizontally as well as vertically. If the arrangement of the spheres in the first row is said to be of A type, then the arrangement of the spheres in the successive rows is also of a type the packing thus obtained is called aaa type packing you can also see that each sphere is in contact with four other spheres two on either side one above and one below hence the coordination number becomes 4 Also, if you join the centers of these four spheres, you will get a square. Therefore, this type of close packing is also referred to as square close packing. The other way is for the spheres of the second row to be seated on the first row in a staggered manner. That is, in the depressions of the first layer. third layer are placed in the depressions of the second layer and so on evidently physics the spheres in the third row are vertically aligned with the spheres in the first row this pattern is followed throughout if the arrangement of the spheres in the first layer is of a type then the arrangement of the spheres in the second layer is of b type 
and the arrangement of the spheres in the third layer is again of A type. And so on. The packing thus obtained is called ABAB type packing. You can also see that each sphere is in contact with six other spheres, two on either side, two in the layer below, and two more in the layer above. Hence, the coordination number of a sphere becomes six. Also, if you join the centers of these six spheres, you get a hexagonal pattern. Therefore, this type of close packing is also referred to as hexagonal close packing. If you compare the two arrangements, you can see that in hexagonal close packing, the constituent spheres occupy the space more efficiently. Therefore, constituent particles will arrange themselves in hexagonal close packing in a plane or two dimensions. Some spaces are left vacant after the close packing of the spheres. These vacant spaces are called voids or interstitial sites. In the figure, the empty spaces are seen as curved triangular spaces. These spaces left between the spheres can be divided into two kinds, B and C. The spaces marked B are the ones in which the apex of the triangular spaces is pointing downwards, while the spaces marked C are the ones in which the apex of the triangular spaces is pointing upwards. As real crystals are all three-dimensional in nature, we will use this two-dimensional hexagonal close packing to build three-dimensional structures later on in this course. Solids differ from the other states of matter in that they have long-range order. To achieve long-range order, all the constituent particles need to be arranged in a symmetrical pattern in three dimensions. We will extend our knowledge of close packing in two dimensions to build symmetrical patterns in three dimensions. Let's first study three-dimensional close packing from two-dimensional square close packing. In order to build a three-dimensional structure, it is easier to stack two-dimensional square close packed planes one above the other. As you can see, the spheres are aligned horizontally as well as vertically. If the arrangement of spheres in the first layer is considered to be of A type, then the arrangement of spheres in the subsequent layers is also of A type. This three-dimensional arrangement is referred to as AAA type packing. If you look carefully, you will find that this arrangement has resulted in the formation of a simple cubic lattice. The unit cell of this lattice is a primitive cubic unit cell. Another way to build a three-dimensional close packing is from a two-dimensional hexagonal close packing. As you can see, the depressions of the first layer are the ideal seats for the next layer of spheres. By placing the constituent particles or the spheres in the depressions of the first layer, a second plane of closed packed spheres lying on the first plane is generated. It is important to note that when the spheres are placed on the voids of B type in the first layer, the C type voids are left unoccupied as no sphere can be placed in them. As the spheres of the two layers are aligned differently, let the arrangement of spheres in the first layer be referred to as 
A type and in the second layer as B type. A closer look at the arrangement indicates the formation of two different kinds of voids marked as O and T. If you look carefully, you will find that this arrangement has resulted in the formation of a simple cubic lattice. It is also called cubic close packing, CCP, or face-centered close packing, FCC. Metals like iron, copper, and silver crystallize in CCP structures. Further, as can be seen in hexagonal close packing and cubic close packing, a sphere has the coordination number 12. It is in contact with six spheres in its own layer, three more in the layer above, and three more in the layer below. Also, both the forms hexagonal close packing and cubic close packing are equally efficient in terms of filling up space. In both of them, 74% of the space in the crystal is filled up. Look at the number of tetrahedral and octahedral voids present in these arrangements. In a close-packed structure, whether CCP or HCP, if there are n spheres in the packing per unit cell, then the number of octahedral voids is the same as n, while the number of tetrahedral voids is equal to 2n. For example, in a CCP arrangement, if four atoms or ions are present per unit cell, then the number of octahedral voids is also four, while the number of tetrahedral voids is eight. Same as the number of spheres or the constituent particles, while the number of tetrahedral voids is double the number of sphere. Let us now look at how the cations and the anions are placed in the close packing. Usually, the anions being larger in size form the basic crystal lattice and the cations being smaller in size occupy the voids. A relatively small cation occupies the tetrahedral void while a relatively bigger cation occupies the octahedral void. For example, sodium ions having size of 102 picometers occupy the octahedral voids in a sodium chloride lattice and the zinc ions with size of 74 picometers occupy the tetrahedral voids in a zinc sulfide lattice. The fraction of octahedral or tetrahedral voids occupied in a given lattice depends upon the chemical formula of the compound. To handing of the concept, let us work on a few problems. And CCP for cubic close packing arrangement of particles. Now let us study hexagonal close packing. In this arrangement, the spheres are closely packed in successive layers in the AB, AB type of arrangement, as shown here. Each unit cell has 17 spheres with radius R and edge length of unit cell 2R. Among these, 12 spheres are at the corners of two hexagons, two spheres at the center of the two faces, above and below, and the remaining three in the middle of the unit cell, as shown here. 
You can calculate how many atoms or spheres each HCP unit cell contributes. Each sphere at the corner of a unit cell is shared by six surrounding unit cells. So, the contribution of the corner atoms to a unit cell is 12 into 1 by 6, which is equal to 2. The contribution of the atoms at the two face centers is equal to 2 into 1 by 2, which is equal to 1. On the other hand, the contribution of the atoms inside the 8CP unit cell is 3 into 1, which is equal to 3. So, the total contribution is 2 plus 1 plus 3, which is equal to 6. Note that the formula to calculate the volume of an 8CP unit cell is base area into height. The base area of a hexagon is equal to 6 multiplied by root 3 upon 4 multiplied by 2R whole square. The height of a unit cell is equal to 4R multiplied by root 2 upon 3. So, the total volume of an 8CP unit cell can be taken as 24 multiplied by root 2 multiplied by R cube. Let us now see the formula for packing fraction. It is the ratio of the volume occupied by spheres per unit cell to the volume of the unit cell. The volume of spheres in this unit cell is given by V sphere is equal to 6 multiplied by 4 upon 3 multiplied by pi multiplied by R cube, which is equal to 8 pi R cube. Substituting the volume terms in the packing fraction term and simplifying. The resultant value is 0 0.74, which is equal to 74%. Therefore, the packing efficiency in 8CP arrangement is equal to 74%. Let's study cubic close packing now. Let the edge length of a unit cell be A is equal to 2R. And the radius of each sphere be R. In this arrangement, each unit cell has 8 spheres at the 8 corners and 6 spheres at the 6 face centers. So the contribution of the corner atoms to a unit cell is given by 8 into 1 upon 8, which is equal to 1. The contribution of the face center atoms is given by 6 into half, which is equal to 3. So the total contribution is 1 plus 3 is equal to 4. Let spheres A, B and C lying on the unit cell form a right triangle, as shown here. Then, applying Pythagoras' theorem, we get AC square is equal to AB square plus BC square. Therefore, AC square is equal to A square plus A square, which is equal to 2A square. Hence, AC is equal to root 2A. However, face diagonal AC in terms of edge length is AC is equal to 4R. Therefore, equating the two expressions for AC, we get 4R is equal to root 2A. Hence, R is equal to root 2 upon 4 multiplied by A as given here. Packing efficiency is the ratio of the volume occupied by the spheres per unit cell to the volume of a unit cell. The volume occupied by 4 spheres is given by 4 multiplied by 4 upon 3 multiplied by pi multiplied by r cube. This expression in terms of edge length A is 4 multiplied by 4 upon 3 multiplied by pi multiplied by root 2 A upon 4 whole cube. Hence, 
The backing efficiency in CCP arrangement is 0.7406, which is equal to 74.06%. You know that BCC stands for Body-Centered Cubic Arrangement of Particles. Let's now study Body-Centered Cubic Arrangement. In this arrangement, the particles are present at the corners and the body center lattice points. Each unit cell has nine spheres with radius r. The edge length of a unit cell is a is equal to 2r. Among these, eight spheres are present at the corners and one sphere at the body center of the unit cell as shown here. You can calculate how many atoms or spheres each BCC unit cell contributes. Each sphere at the corner of a unit cell is shared by eight surrounding unit cells. So the contribution of the corner atoms to a unit cell is 8 into 1 by 8, which is equal to 1. The contribution of the atom at the body center is equal to 1 into 1, which is equal to 1. So the total contribution of the atoms per unit cell is 1 plus 1, which is equal to 2. Consider points A, B and C on the unit cell which form a right-angled triangle. Therefore, on applying Pythagoras' theorem, we can say AC square is equal to AB square plus BC square. Substituting the values, we get AC square is equal to A square plus A square, which is equal to 2A square. On the other hand, Points A, C, and D lying on the unit cell form a right-angled triangle. Applying Pythagoras' theorem to these points, AD square is equal to AC square plus CD square. Hence, AD square is equal to 2A square plus A square, which is equal to 3A square. Therefore, AD is equal to root 3 into A. The body diagonal of a unit cell is AD is equal to 4R. Hence, equating the two expressions for AD, we can say that 4R is equal to root 3 into A. Hence, R becomes equal to root 3 upon 4 into A. Let us now see the formula for packing efficiency. It is the ratio of the volume occupied by spheres per unit cell to the volume of the unit cell. So the volume of two spheres per unit cell is given by 2 into 4 upon 3 into pi into root 3 upon 4 into a whole cube. The volume of a unit cell is given by a cube. On substituting these expressions in the formula for packing efficiency and simplifying, we get 0.6805 or 68.05%. Therefore, the packing efficiency in a BCC arrangement is equal to 68.05%. This is all for today's students. Uh, with the help of the video, we can understand those things which we can't do in the class because there is a th three-dimensional aspect. Just like the hexagonal, uh, in case of hexagonal, uh, we can't predict the number of atoms present in there. So, with the help of video, we can do that. Thank you.